discussing that. Some of the technology we're currently using uh, will be presented by Mrs. Miller Overdrive <coughs> Infrastructure and our current technology coordinator, John Wilson, will give you an update on our current uh, accessibility and our upgrades that we're doing. And then I'll give you a short presentation about where we are going uh, in the near future. So with that, I'd like to introduce Mr. Dunner, Instructional Specialist, to start off with where we are currently. dinosaurs at everyone's desk, teachers, and all those labs that we have. And we have roughly like 14, 1,500 computers in the district, and I'd say probably 90% of those are desktops, wouldn't you? For the most part. So this is where we're at. It's kind of, kind of old school here. Well, hardwired connectivity, which means we have to be plugged into the network for it in order to access your network drives or the internet. So when you're doing research or anything, you have to be at one of the dinosaur desktops so that you can access anything there. Then we have our computer lab, which each building has about at least one designated computer lab, and then they have the library labs, typically, and then the high school docking zone has multiple computer labs, besides those that are in the media center. We have, what, two, three, three if you count Mr. Perry's class. We have one wireless mobile lab per building, on average, and I think that's across districts, so if we did want to get mobile, it's pretty tough to share those with all of them. I think they're usually checked out at all times, too. Someone usually has them. So we're kind of limited with the computer labs and with our mobile lab as to how many students can access information on the network or on the internet. And we also have limited professional development for teachers and, I guess, for students to show them how to use the stuff, which most of the students already do. But man, it's because manpower, we just don't have everything we need to do, all that we need to do. And every classroom has an interactive whiteboard, whether it's a smart board at junior high through, or I guess kindergarten through junior high, and then here we have Promethean boards, which are in essence the same thing, different name, some of them have different features. But everyone's seen those where you can interact with them, which is not very nice to have. Three out of four buildings now, currently as of this year, can check out ebooks. Um, Peyton uses Fallet. I don't think they actually let them check it out outside of the building, but they can sit down on the computers in the library lab, from my understanding, and read them there. Uh, otherwise, junior high, high school can do it. Robinson hasn't gotten here yet. I think they're working on that. Acuity is used. Is it used in the high school? That's used, I think, junior high on down yes. to track student achievement. It's, it's, it's an online assessment tool to see where they're at currently within the lesson that they're doing. Um, smart notebook or Promethean flip charts, just that's what you see when you use the interactive whiteboard. That's the program used so they can create the interactive lessons. In essence, it's the same thing, different features, different names, but it's what controls your interactivity when you're on a whiteboard. And I think Pace and intermediate school, I know primarily use a lot of smart clickers where they can take interactive quizzes as opposed to having to do a written quiz. They're, uh, they're either on the network or they're online quizzes. So it's just a different way to do it. You get instant feedback on what your results are and you can track where your students are at as far as that goes. I know the intermediate schools use a lot of these almost weekly. They take a weekly quiz with that. Presentation styles have changed as opposed to the way old school is done. We have Prezi, which is what this is, as opposed to PowerPoint, which has kind of been outdated in a sense, overdone. Because when I was teaching, I used to think it was overdone. Discovery Ed and Khan Academy, a lot of teachers use videos now to make media-rich lessons, as opposed to just standing up there and lecturing to you, kind of like I'm doing now. And then a plethora, a lot of websites are used almost on a daily basis throughout all the different classes. Um, Gizmo is just an it's mainly geared towards kindergarten through junior high. I think they have some high school level things. Well, I guess it's more like second grade. But basically, it's a website that is, it has online labs for math and science only, which are interactive labs. Some think of them as games, but they're built around specific subjects and certain lessons. 
IXL is very geared towards math to increase your math skills. Brain Pop Study Island, <coughs> a lot. again, they're just got educational type games. These are mainly geared towards lower kids. There are some that's more higher than grade levels. And I think, Ms. Miller, if you want to talk about overdrive. Okay. Actually, have a question. Do you have a question? On the gizmos, do we have a license for that? Because Intermediate school has a license. I know they've just bought it this year. I don't know if it's school district. I don't know if it's district wide, but I know they paid for it there to get it. I've used up all my email addresses trying to use the, the free version. They do we can, I know, I mean, like I said, I know Dr. Page at the Intermediate ordered it. How many licenses he got with that, we can email him and find out. Brandon Grant, I think they all please, Brandon Grant. They use that quite a bit regular. They started that, I think, a couple months after the beginning of the school year. So we do have it. I don't just don't know how many licenses he purchased when he got it. So we can check on that and find out where you see. Because I know they have some high school level labs and stuff. Yeah. Good morning. Um, I don't know how many of you guys have been in a classroom where I um, did the overdrive. Any of you students? How many of you guys have um, a computer at home? Most of you. Okay. How many of you have a smartphone? Several of you. Very good. Um, if you have, how many of you have a Nook or an e-reader of some kind? Okay. Well, just to let you know, um, e-readers, uh, iPads, Nooks, um, Kindles, that kind of thing, uh, has just exploded in the market. Okay. In the month of December, they actually doubled the amount of e-readers in people's hands that they currently had um, internationally, okay, um, just in the month of December. So that technology is exploding. Um, in probably five to ten years, you guys are going to be looking at books uh, probably a totally different way. There will always be books. There will always, always be libraries. You walk in, you pull it off the shelf. I mean, that will never go away. Um, but technology dictates that we have to get... We have to uh, keep up, and um, <coughs> books, e-books, are a huge um, thing right now, and they will continue <coughs> to just grow and grow. When you guys go to college, um, some of you students, you will probably um, get a lot of your textbooks with e-books, um, and that's how you can read those. Um, a lot of internet, interactive e-books will start. Um, so you guys have to get prepared. In order for us to get prepared for that, we created or uh, went with Overdrive, and um, that is a company that helps us with an ebook collection. And so actually, instead of the libraries that you see here, we have libraries uh, throughout the district, but we also have another library, and that is an internet library. And oh, we, we um, what that is, you can get online 24-7, check out a book and find it as long as I have it in the e-library. And I'm going to show you what our e-library looks like. On a, on a laptop, you need to download a couple programs, really um, easy, small programs. One's Digital Editions and one's Overdrive Media Console. The Overdrive Media Console is for audiobooks, so if you ever want to um, listen to your books, you can download audiobooks here. Um, what I do, they have an Overdrive app, which I have on my phone, okay? And um, I download the Overdrive app. I find my book right on my phone and download the book, or I, I don't usually read uh, books on my phone. I usually have to listen to them, so I can download that that ebook right on my phone and listen to it with my, my earphones. This is what our library looks like online. This is what you'll get to if you go to our library. These are all the new releases that it talks about. The most popular books are the ones that are most checked out. Recently returned, recommended titles, and then if you go over to the side. You have all kinds of genres over here if you want to specifically look for something. Um, when you come to the website, those programs I was talking about are right over here. And all you do is click on those, and it takes you right to return. They're very small programs, they don't take up a lot of room on your computer. 
computer, um, but that's what the computer uses to download those books and then um, transfer them to your device. Okay, so I'm not going to download those. But what I would do basically is I would pick out a book and I would check that out using my library card. How many of you guys know your library card number? Nobody, because I don't either. Um, it's on your student ID card. The right underneath the barcodes, there's a, a string of about 10 numbers, and that's your number. So as long as you have that student ID uh, that you use for lunch or whatever, you can check out a book because that's the only number you need. If you don't have that, um, come in to me and I will, I will give that to you. I also have cards for you in the library that I can create and give it to you. Okay? But very simple. Um, if I pick this book out, The best part about this, too, is if I have a Kindle, I can also check books out. It takes it takes me straight that's to my why Amazon I account. Um, that's why you get your Kindle books, is through Amazon. It takes me straight to my Amazon account. I log in, and it keeps everything in my Amazon account. I actually get that book from Amazon, but it's checked out through this library. It's really pretty cool. Okay, And then it automatically shows up on my device, Wi-Fi, as long as you have Wi-Fi. Um, once I get to that book, I where it takes me and it says, um, do you want to continue browsing or proceed to check out or proceed? And this is where I would put in my number. Okay, Very simple, very easy to use. Um, as this library grows, you'll see more and more titles out there. Okay, um, Nonfiction and fiction as well. And I have both of those there. So um, just something we are doing. And um, like I said, with your smartphones, you can start using that. You just go to your, um, it has Android and Apple have the program or have the app, and you just go download the app from the store. It's called Overdrive. Pretty cool. Any questions about that part? Okay, as far as with, since these are e books, so in theory, we both could check out the same book. It's not like... No, that is not true. Okay. No. Um, these are one title, okay, unless I own two titles, and then two people could check them out. It's just like the library. Um, e-books, because you are checking them out, they are still copyrighted. Okay, just like I have in the library. I can't check out four or five of them. You know what I mean? I can't make copies of that book and give it to all the students, right? Um, so it is just one at a time. You can, if you go in and somebody's got the book checked out, you just put it on hold, and you can do that through here too. You say, add to, add to my hold, and it will send you an email when it's ready. When somebody, um, The best part is you don't have to check your books in. I don't know about you guys, but, well, I do know about you guys, actually. <laughs> So most of you students, um, I have a hard time getting my books back on time, and some other people do too, okay? And the best part about this, you don't ever have to worry about that. After the 14 or 21 day that you can pick either checkout, you can pick 21 days to keep it or 14 days to keep it, and after that amount of time, it automatically goes away from your device and gets checked back into that internet library, okay? So that is... A huge benefit besides the fact that it's open 24-7. You don't have to wait for the school day to check out books. You can check them out at night, you can check them out on the weekends, whatever you need to do. And I have several of the books that you guys use in class on here. And so if you leave your book at, at school or whatever you need to read it, you can check it out through the online library. Any other questions? Yes. If you finish the book or if we needed the textbook and can check it back in just on your phone. You can check it back in. The thing is, it's not a perfect system in that when it checks in, it can automatically go to someone else. It wants you to keep that book for 14 days, and so it will it will keep it for 14 days. Even though it's off your system, it's still checked out to you. That makes sense. It's kind of a just kind of a copy issue that, that there is, and that's just what you deal with. Um, you can check out up to two books at a time, and I will probably increase that as the collection grows. Okay. So as the collection grows, you'll continue to, to get more and more books. And you'll continue to use this more and more, Okay, the more devices that you have. And I would suggest since in college, for you students in college, if you plan to go there, that's, that's where they're going, that's where they're headed. Get just a taste of it now. Start using it now. Okay. Any other questions?
kind of give you a little background of me is that uh, I spent the previous 11 years at Bolivar R1 as their tech director and developing their IT department. Uh, when I started out back in 1999, we had two file servers and about 200 computers. We grew that all the way up to about oh, 17, 18 file servers, all the associated infrastructure, uh, about 1,400 computers, something in that, that neighborhood. Um, so anyway, uh, before that, I worked for a company called Integrated Solutions Group in Springfield, Missouri as a K-12 education rep in southwest Missouri. I dealt with all kinds of schools and, and providing solutions to them and support. So I've had quite an extensive background with K-12 education and dealing with technology and uh, hopefully bringing a lot of that experience here. Uh, over the years, I've developed a couple of philosophies. One is that I have no intention uh, of using bleeding edge, edge technology, new technology just because it is new technology. I kind of like to see that mature uh, a little bit. Obviously, uh, the expectations are to look at what's available out there, what the new, new things that are coming out, to evaluate it, see where it fits in the, the education market, and like I said, let it mature a little bit before we actually bring it into production if it does have value. <clears throat> the other thing is that I do not expect Aurora School District to follow anybody. Uh, I don't like to do things just because another school district or another school is doing something. What I like to do is to see what they are doing, to learn from their mistakes, and to take it to the next level. So my expectations are to be a leader with technology as well as to see all of you be leaders in technology. So with that, uh, one of the things that excited me about coming to Aurora was uh, uh, looking at the one-to-one -one initiative, looking at putting laptop computers or t computer technology into the hands of students, where every student would have one, not only use in school, but to extend that education beyond the walls, take it home and be able to continue with that. So there's a number of challenges that I have to, to provide this kind of uh, infrastructure, this, this seamless and transparent infrastructure for you to be able to utilize this, this new and exciting learning environment. Uh, we, we have a lot of challenges in, in that we have to provide an infrastructure, a wireless infrastructure that will support that many devices. So I have a lot of things that I'm looking at there. There's also tools that we're looking at. Uh, different things that uh, will allow you to leverage that use of that, that individual computer in your hands. And one of these things that we're looking at uh, is provided by a new appliance that I've just installed and we're in the process of integrating. It's called Lightspeed. It will allow me a, a better way of uh, complying with the federal government as far as what the, the access the schools have to internet content. But it gives me the ability to uh, provide a better management of that bandwidth that we'll have for using the different tools with, within that. But uh, one of the big things that really excited me that really has application is uh, something called My Big Campus. Has anybody heard of Blackboard? You know what Blackboard is? Uh, Blackboard is classroom management through the, through the internet, through an internet web page that's pretty much delivery based. Now my big campus goes beyond that and makes it interactive based. Everybody I'm sure is used to Facebook. Well, you're gonna see that kind of an interface with my big campus. So it takes that learning involved that, that is more collaborative where you're able to use that kind of a chat, that uh, ability to have a, a wall for instance and to see everything that's going on, to work with your students, your teachers, to have all that content in one place uh, so that you can keep up with your lessons, work on those projects, uh, see the, the interactive content that's available. I'm gonna, give me just a moment here, I'm gonna pull up a couple of things to show you.
show you two little clips. First one is a, basically a teacher that's going to be talking about what it does for learning schools. basically be your portal, your window into education at the school and outside the school. Uh, when you take your, your laptops, your computers at home, you can access it through the internet. You'll be able to get on and see the same thing at home that you see it here. Be able to get to your, your classes, your assignments, be able to submit your assignments, be able to see your grades, uh, be able to interact with your classmates, with your teacher, to solve those problems and those, uh, complete those assignments. Uh, another thing that we'll be able to do, uh, of course, uh, we have to work out acceptable use policies, but uh, as long as the administration wants to do it, we will have the capability where you can bring in those iPods, uh, those iPhones, iPads, which are uh, very exciting, and uh, use those within our network in the school. Uh, however, you will have the same security and restrictions on those as you would with using any of the other laptops or any of the computer uh, equipment that you have at school. So that would allow you to be able to use apps like on your iPad for connecting into OverDrive or connecting into your My Big Campus, uh, be able to research the internet, but you would still have the same filtering capability that you would on any other computer. So it will extend, extend those capabilities to you for those devices that you already have. Um, that, it kind of, in a nutshell, it's a very exciting time. We're kind of uh, seeing these uh, walls of education dissolve and uh, learning that uh, will transfer into the workplace uh, very seamlessly. We're seeing all that kind of go away and, and uh, provide new tools for you. That's a Facebook account. I just got a question. Everybody, right? This My Big Campus that Mr. Wilson was talking about looks and acts very similar to Facebook, so it should be very easy for you guys to transition into it.
professional development on apples and also integration into the classroom with technology, what we currently have with Promethean boards and use of laptops uh, with teachers this spring, this summer, and use all next year to help prepare uh, our staff to move and transition into hopefully what we'll call a 21st century learning environment where we'll have a lot of different things that can go on. Um, elementary wise and middle school wise are going to involve them as well. Uh, once we get the laptops in uh, August of 2013, we're going to move most of our labs or all of our labs and computers down to the middle school so they'll be close to one to one if not probably one to two for every student with that moving down. And then K6, we're looking at purchasing iPads on a one to five ratio, so one iPad for every five students in K6 level to start transitioning more to uh, a technology friendly environment. And where I like to go on the end there, the blended or online classes. Uh, look towards moving towards blended classrooms where Mrs. Shively's class would be an example where she has her podcast where you could watch that, do that stuff at home, and then come into the school to do the labs or take the formative or summative um, examinations and maybe blend a little bit. And we're also looking at, with that initiative, to do more online classes where, again, uh, you could stay home and maybe first hour or eighth hour and you could work on an online class instead of coming into the official building and, and doing that classwork and, again, doing your formative or summatives here at school would be the time. So that will allow us for some flexibility, not only with our staff, our schedule, but also flexibility with, with students, what they can and can't do uh, around VOTEC or jobs or things like that that you're doing, or hopefully dual credit or college classes. So that will give us a lot of flexibility with what we can do uh, in the near future. When I first started looking at one-to-one, I started asking the question of why do we want to go one-to-one, -one? and this is going to be an extreme case, but hopefully this plays and it has sound with it. But maybe I've sat through classes like this, and I know more than likely students sitting here have sat through classes like this before. Hopefully this will play.
the students here sat through a class, well, that's what we felt like. We do, I know I've done some walkthroughs here and every place I've been, but that is not an everyday thing, but I do see kids, and it's not all kids at the same time. But there are times where we are not fully engaging you as students. And one of the reasons I think one-to-one -one will be of help is we can help engage you with something that you'd like to, to use, technology. Uh, the information can be more accessible to you. I know you guys carry in your smartphones and have more information on them than what any staff member here has. So we're going to have to change a little bit of what we are doing. So why one-to-one? -one? First and foremost is prepare these students at, for 21st century. Uh, learning and for the environment going into workplace. Uh, the study that was the top 10 jobs currently did not exist in 2004. So when you guys go to college, you have time to know what jobs are going to be in the top 10 that do not even exist today. So to help prepare you for that, we've got to help change the way that we are teaching you and the tools that we're giving you to, to do that. Uh, hopefully increase in achievement and engagement in the classroom help you guys to create stuff instead of just sit there like the video showed and be bored out of your mind. Help you guys get involved and be engaged in the classroom. Uh, the reason for one-to-one -one is to level the playing field no matter what kind of economics or family economics you come from. So, you know, the wealthy kid that can afford the laptops, the iPads and that stuff, and those that can't. So we come into a school environment, we're all using the same as Apple Mac Airs, which are top of the line. Hopefully those we keep those brand new every three four years and keep our technology up to date but everybody will have access to the same tools at the same time and collaborate with their teachers at any time that they want to um, and help increase that uh, increase communication and collaboration I put on there globally but I think not only globally but within your, your peer group if you're taking a first hour class and a seventh hour class the same there's no reason why you the technology you cannot collaborate on a project and turn it in and that will open up a little bit more avenues for working together with different students and not really be uh, limited to what class that you're in. Uh, and also globally, that's, that's easy to say with, with technology. And then customized learning opportunities. Probably the most exciting thing for me is going from standardized to a customized learning environment where, like I said, the blended classes or the online classes or uh, other things like that we can mix and match and make that environment better for you guys uh, in the long run. So with one water classroom, hopefully we'll provide better, and some of those words on their interaction, uh, hopefully collaboration, a connection with your teacher and your classmates and students around the world. I hope you create stuff, share information easier with each other and your, and your teachers. Help build a relationship with people that you might not have relationships with before. Again, that's a kind of the global picture. Uh, participation and hopefully build, build a community here at the world where we're sharing that information with each other. And hopefully we'll get out of and not have a stool where the national average that you guys get to ask a question is one every 10 hours. So with this technology in the classroom, there could be a presentation by a student or a staff member and the background of the program can be running where you can be typing in your questions and your classmates can be answering that question at the time. Your teacher can be answering the questions for you, you know, in real time instead of you waiting uh, for the end of the presentation and you may or may not ask a question. Uh, not only in classroom but outside. If we get my big campus up and going, you could post a question on my big campus about your homework, about math, about chemistry, whatever, and other students can answer that question for you, or your teacher might be online, and they can answer that question for you at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock at night, and be more interactive and not be stuck on something, and waiting for the next day to come in and ask that one question. Or saying that when you have to come to school, we have to power down. I know a lot of you have smartphones, a lot of you have internet at home, and then when we come to school, we restrict severely what you can use. No cell phone use. Um, we have limited labs uh, that you can use or are accessible to. And so we really are asking you guys to go from a, a technology world that you live in all but six or seven hours of your day, and you come in here and you, you have to power down from that. And we're expecting you guys to... Harvard 
study said that the single, single uh, best predictor of success in, in Harvard was to be able to collaborate in study groups. So that's kind of what we're after with one to one, be able to collaborate with more people in study groups. What I see is our biggest hurdles. I put in there techno teacher technophobia. Uh, you guys, our students currently are digital natives. You guys have grown up with this technology in your hands since you can remember. For us, we are immigrants. We are coming into your world and trying to use this technology. So having our staff and myself uh, get over that fear of what technology is, what it can do, is going to be a big hurdle for us. Uh, so we're going to put in a lot of training, a lot of professional development, but also get to the mindset where teachers and our staff are going to be learning probably just as much about technology from you guys as you hopefully are going to learn the, the curriculum from them. And so it's going to be, I see it being more of a blended atmosphere where you're teaching the teacher technology as they're teaching you how to use the information that they're providing in your classroom. So that will be a big step from what you saw in the video where you had the, uh, the straight lecture type of teacher to a Mrs. Shively or you know, where you have a, a kind of a flipped classroom atmosphere to a joint atmosphere. Uh, institutional conservatism. That kind of goes back to what we allow you guys to do. Uh, more freedom to and more acceptability of the technology that is there. The committee of 10. The committee of 10 I put up there because we are in a standardized education. We have been since 1892. That's when this committee of 10 of higher education met. They set up the current system of education that we have. Their current system said we have eight years of elementary education, four years of high school, and we have standardized all the way through. So every year, this is what you're going to be taught, no matter, you know, or at a certain age, no matter if you're a grade A student or below level, you're going to learn the same information at the same time. And I think we are entering, and we need to enter, uh, a customization type of education where it is customized for the students at their level at the time they're ready and willing to get that information. And we should be able to provide that for you guys at, at any time. So that will be a hurdle to kind of change from the standardized world that we live in, from standardized tests, from standardized curriculum. Uh, and that's not only at our school level, but at federal, state level. We have a lot of work to do to make that happen. And of course, budget. Um, budget is going to be the biggest hurdle to keep technology uh, up to date and fresh. And I, but I think that if technology is our priority, we'll put technology into the classrooms first, and then we'll worry about the other uh, aspects of what the budget needs to be. So I think Mr. Decker has put an emphasis on technology. Uh, with our upgrades we're putting in place, and it has to be a priority every single year to make sure we have the best uh, technology that we can provide for our students. All right, any questions? Yes. Um, will there be a cost, like a sort of an insurance type thing for the <clears throat> children to keep the computers for that year? Right, currently there, the plan will be in place is around $40, I believe, per year to have a, a computer insured. So in case freshman drops it or smash something in between and crack the screen. You have the insurance for the uh, cost that we'll probably put on to the students. And if, what would you do if a parent, um, parents, some parents don't like to give their child so much technology even in the upcoming years? What if they don't want their child to have a laptop? Well, the thing about we have light speed, which will help. Uh, so them not getting ever use a laptop will probably not happen. But we can limit the access to whatever they want for each student using light speed. So if we don't want them to be on the internet, that specific student cannot be on the internet. If they don't want to take them home, we'll have places here where they can, they can hold well, them in place. If, if a parent signs off and says, okay, we don't want to have any internet access at home, I have a capability within this new device that I can get here, <coughs> put in a schedule for that one particular student and say, okay, internet access is not available between 5 o'clock in the afternoon and 5 o'clock in the morning. And it gets turned back on whenever they bring it to school. But they would still, I, and, and we can even get to the granular part of it where I could allow them still to get them to my big campus to do their homework. Uh, of course, you know, if there's any research that they have to do in there that requires internet, you know, they would be blocked out from that. But, but we, we, with this new tool, it's 
most exciting thing about this is that I will have a granular approach to being able to pick and choose on what we can do with it when, when we can do that. Very good. Good question. Anybody else? Um, I guess I know whenever this is presented that a lot of people are asking, well, what about the whole money issue? And I know you said as far as budget-wise, we are kind of filtering more towards technology. But we also know that the state as a whole is not going to be funding us as much as they have in the past. Are we going to have to make other cuts because of this one-to-one? -one? You get to work for free. <laughs> that would probably be a better question for Mr. Packard to answer. But I know from talking to him and, and just a little bit is that it becomes a priority. And it becomes a light item. And you, you make your cuts in your other places that you, that you need to. But he wants to address that a little bit more. Part of what we'll do is as we get... The job of the administration is to, between now and 2013, is to look at what we have program-wise in our district, uh, look at our district mission statement, ensuring all students are successful learners, and see where programs, you know, if we're putting a lot of money into a program that's not really feeding our mission, maybe we need to reallocate those funds into the technology because ultimately the idea behind technology is if we're going to ensure that all of our students are successful learners, that means not the way we learn, the way they, you know, the way they need to be prepared to go into the world that they're going to go into. Um, and so we feel like that's a big move as far as the technology piece. Um, we did, we just got finished refinancing some bonds. Uh, the district's done well. and. We're going to save uh, by refinancing bonds. The board is going to save the district over a million dollars in 10 years. So some of those monies will be allocated for technology. So there's things in place. The goal is to be able to come up with the money to cover the technology in current budget with line item and still continue to do what we're doing otherwise. So, uh, and, and like I said, that's going to be the, that's my job over the next year and a half is to make sure that we can do it that way. Questions for us.